In hour 28, you will find uh, two PDFs on the right-hand column of the student videos. Uh, this is the first one, which basically um, will review the two groups of patterns that we're going to concentrate on today. The last three hours, 25, 26, and 27, were sort of heavy-duty learning experiences. This will give a little bit of a break. and will open up their eyes to easy ways to expand the way that they express themselves. Um, Q here, we'll begin with the top form. Q here is a question and S is a sentence. You know, what did you get? What is it that you got? Where did she go? Where is it that she went? Why did you go? Why is it that you went? This is what we studied this in our in chapter um, uh, 19. Why is it that and how come for why? Then the same with when, who, and how. You know, how is it that you fixed it? Who both, as you know, has a subject. It comes in as a subject or refers to the object. This is how the object is done. Who is it that you met? I met her. If you refer to the subject, who is it that, and a verb goes right here, who is it that came? So how do I practice this? Well, I just simply make questions with, pa with patterns that we've learned, and they simply change it over. Now, some people may want to tell you at the beginning that these aren't used a lot. Um, in fact, they are. They're very common. They're very natural sounding. So I make the question, they have the answer. To help myself if I'm not, um, you know, um, if I don't feel real comfortable with it, I'll look at my YouTube video guide that you can easily print out in the pattern guides and just begin to make some examples. You know, what did you want to go, uh, what did you want to buy? They would say, what is it that you want to buy? Where did you get to go? Where is it that you got to go? Why is it that you're going to meet him? When should I go? When is it that I should go? Who are you thinking of meeting? Who is it that you're thinking of meeting? How do you plan to do it? How is it that you plan to do it? The question simply becomes the sentence. In the second PDF, which you'll see in the at the right next to this one, um, in this group, there's also another PDF because, in fact, there are four four ways to say this. This is our second way that we learned today. In our 31 and 32, we'll uh, learn other ways to do it. So I just have a printout of that. If you want to go over the other ones, if you feel confident they're familiar with it go ahead, but I just do one at a time. Get them familiar with using it. Then I tell them in the class, when you ask me a question, I will no longer let you use these. If you want to ask me a question with what, where, why, when, who, and how, you have to use this form. Why? I'm making them do it so that they begin to feel comfortable with it. If you don't make them do it initially, they won't do it. Nobody gets it the first time. They have to practice it over and over in order to make it part of themselves. No one gets it the first time. So you have to give them a format so that which forces them to use it. This is very simple to teach. This, um, once again, follows this format here of what, where, why, when, who, and how. The universe seems to revolve around these six generalities. And as you see here, sometimes I've switched that, this, and it, because this in the third person um, will change a bit. Um, when are these used? There's a, a lot of times these are used. They're used when you point to something when you point out something, when you refer to something, when you respond to something that's said, or when you touch something. Let's begin with this. You know, um, somebody has, um, uh, 
you see, they come into the room and they put down a new pen that they bought. When you refer to it, you can point to the pen and just say, oh, that is what I bought. If you can touch it, you use this. Oh, this is what I bought. That is things usually you don't touch, but you point to. It is the same thing here. The, you know, it's what I bought. Uh, somebody, um, you, you're sitting down in a cafeteria and a guy comes in and, oh, you recognize him. Oh, that's who I met yesterday. You're referring to something, someone, somewhere. You see how somebody makes uh, a cake. Oh, that's how I make it. You know, that's how I make it. You are looking in a magazine, National Geographic, you know, beautiful magazine, and it's talking about uh, Japan. And you see a beautiful picture, and you just refer to it. And you say, oh, that's where I want to go. Somebody makes an excuse, and they say, uh, you know, I didn't go to the party because uh, it was too late. Your response? Oh, that's why I didn't go. You know, I go to Korea on vacation once a year. Oh, that's that's when I go. I go once a year in the in the summer. So these are meant to stimulate conversation. And believe me, you, you where you're sitting now, you just point to something. I'm pointing outside to my deck. That's where I have picnics. That's where I sit in the summer and listen to music. I look at my um desk here and I have a candle going oh this is what I just lit this is what my wife bought me I look at my iPad this is where I look for um, my ideas this is how I um, I look at my microphone and my this QuickTime player that I use to make this recording this is how I do it so this is used so much it's incredible you just listen to people talk they refer to things. They point to things. You know, this is where I sit in class. Somebody buys a, a new Samsung phone, and they have it in their hand. Oh, that's what I want to buy, or that's what I b bought. You know, a person says, you know, I um, I always um, what I always watch the news when I go. As soon as I go home, I always watch the news. Oh, that's what I do. Or that's when I watch it. Right? So just get the people to just refer to things. Somebody says, um, um, you know, I didn't buy it because it was so expensive. My response, that's why I didn't buy it. You know, I wanted to buy that, um, um, what, that book but it was, I had to go to Chicago to buy it, so I didn't go. The response, that's why I didn't go. Your teacher, everyone loves her, and the person says, oh, I love her because she is so thoughtful. Your response, that's why I like her. It will stimulate more conversation on the, uh, um, on the other way. Uh, you know, I learn English by looking at these uh, videos uh, regarding patterns. And somebody says, oh, that's how I tend to learn it too. So if you respond to something, if you point to something, you touch something, pointing out something is, um, um, you know, um, what, what's an example? When you point out something, oh, um, that's where I go to school. That's who met me yesterday. That's who I love talking to. Whenever you use this, it is uh, the students will begin to sound good and natural. If you ask a question, somebody says, you know, I went to the library last night. Oh, is that where you went? You know, I ate dinner with Miss Kim. Oh, is that who you, you went out with? So you can make up a lot of examples of this. It's a very simple pattern. It'll just expand the ability of your students 
to express themselves. And we're all there to help them to simply express themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, as you well know by this time, vocabulary is not that important. If you look at all the reviews I do, any first grader, first year high school student will know most of those words in English. You do not need to know difficult vocabulary in order to talk. In order to talk, you need to understand the subtle and sophisticated way feelings are expressed. And this is the way, or one of the ways, that you can help them to express themselves. Have fun with this one.